everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Witchy Life Story. Let's see, I'm trying to remember. I'm, it's been about a week since I last recorded an episode. Dinkum has taken over my life again. Oh, that's right. Last time we went on a little, uh, like, barbecue. Went to a little barbecue at the lake with our friends. That was pretty cool. Uh, let's see if uh, our friend here has anything to say. Probably wants... Oh, huh, you've got something for me today. I want to see it. What do you have for us, Ramsey? Yes, I remember our agreement. One crow treat coming up. <laughs> All right, so what have you got for me? Ooh, what did we get today? An amethyst. So purple, so pretty. Thank you, Ramsey. Definitely going to save this for something special. Thanks for this, Ramsey. I've really been enjoying this game. I missed playing it the last week or so, so it's nice to kind of get back into it. Um, oh, can we decorate with our new? Oh no, we tried decorating with our other crystals too and we couldn't use those. I don't think we can. Uh... Oh, we can use that now. Oh, cool. Oh, wait. <laughs> There. <laughs> this is fun to play with. So we haven't unlocked those. There's the uh, amethyst. That's not available for there. I want to find a place that we could have it. Those are only for cards. These are just for the potions and charms and things we make. All right, but at least we could put put that there. Can we put it here? Oh, didn't mean to get rid of you. What did we have up there? The rose. So fun. I'm really enjoying this a lot. Let's see what mail we have, what orders we need to do. Oh gosh, hopefully I remember how to do them. Hello, Moxie. So tired, but can't sleep. Must keep going. Charm, please. Best regards, Mel. So Mel is tired. Needs a little help falling asleep. So we're going to have to get some flowers with those symbols to make a charm for Mel. Uh, Jonas, let's see, you've got to hurry. Bad stuff keeps happening. Mel says maybe I've attracted bad vibes or something. Maybe you've got an oil or something for good vibes only. All right, Jonas, we will try our best. And Nisha says there's this weird energy going on in the art studio that's trapping me or something. How am I supposed to make art when I feel so bogged down? Do you have an oil to help me break free from this? Please hurry, Nisha. All right, let's go out to our garden. I don't know if we'll need to buy any more supplies or not. We'll have to check that out. So some of these are ready. This front garden always takes an extra day for things to grow. Let's see some fertilizer on our lavender there so we'll get a little bit of everything. Let's get some of this too. Okay, and we'll pull our weeds. Give everything a good little water. Thanks. There we go. All right, next garden. This is just so pretty and relaxing. I'm enjoying this a lot, and I'm very interested to see where this story takes us. We seem to learn a little bit more and more each each episode. Okay, I think I watered. Yikes, <laughs> I think I did. Oh, my memory, it's bad. A little of everything here. Give you guys all a little drinky. Okay, get our weeds. Let's make our compost or our fertilizer. So I'm holding on to those just in case we ever need a certain flower or herb. We'll have a fertilizer for getting it. Let's go back home. All right, let's let's get out our book and, and see what we're making for everybody. So we're gonna start with Mel needs this charm. And I think charms use is it that one? Yes, for charms. Uh, okay, let's go back to our plants. 
So for the cross, we need some lavender. I think that's the lavender. And for the orange, calendula. And for this symbol, it looks like we need the yarrow. Let's try stirring that up. Yay! We got an energized charm. I was thinking she needs rest. We should be making something to help her sleep, not stay awake. She needs a good night's rest or two. That's really fit, uh, pretty. Let's keep crafting. Let's see what else we can do. So for Jonas, he needs an oil for good vibes. Uh, oils, I think, use that bottle. Yes, for oils. All right, so for the shield, we need a little rosemary. I bet this little workbench area smells really good with all of these herbs and flowers. Uh, the blue is the pea flower. And then calendula for this symbol. Okay. Stir it all up. Safety oil. Okay, let's keep crafting. That looks cool. And one more. So another oil. We're going to need to buy some more of these bottles when we go out. And for the star, we need a little chamomile. And for the pink, hollyhock. So pretty. And then more calendula. We've used that a lot today. Oh, and we're out of um, lavender. Okay. Lovely freedom oil. Hopefully that'll help her not feel so bogged down. Uh, I want to look at my... We have three of those, one of those, two of those, and we're out of the stuff for oil. So we need more sachet and more of those other bottles. So we'll pop into the store and get some of those as well. Let's go to the village. just get two. Get just one more of those. Wow, I forgot how expensive these things are. These are all thousands of dollars. Okay, <laughs> we're going to have to do a lot of orders. Uh, so we need to deliver some stuff and we also need to follow up with everybody who we did uh, some spells for on the last episode. Let's, we're going to check in with the mayor last. Let's start over here at Nisha's. We will deliver hers and then see how Devin's doing. You walk into the studio and see Nisha standing frozen in the middle of the room. Stop. Don't come any closer. You'll get sucked in too. Uh, I've got your order. So we'll give her the freedom oil, safety oil, energized charm, freedom oil. Quick, roll it to me. Okay. You take the freedom oil and roll it towards Nisha. However, due to the oil's non-cylinder non -cylinder form, it starts to veer off to the left. I was thinking this is not gonna roll well. Almost. Nisha reaches for it, but her feet appear glued to the floor. Fortunately, she manages to grab it just before it rolls out of reach. Got it. That oil won't help with whatever glue has you stuck to the floor. It's not glue. The pressure radiating from these walls is trapping me here. When I wrote my order to you, I could still at least move my feet a little, but now I can't move at all. Nisha pops up the oil and applies it to her wrists. You wait a few moments, then another few moments. Let me see if I can move now. Nisha tries to lift her foot, but it's still stuck to the floor. 
stupid oil. Why isn't it working? Probably because you haven't actually solved what's keeping you from moving. Obviously, it's some sort of energy in the room. Well, yeah, but what energy exactly and why? That's what the oil is supposed to help you figure out. Hmm. I don't have time for this. I need to get unstuck now. Then you need to stop and think about what's causing this. <laughs> Misha doesn't have the patience for that. Looks like she's thinking, though. That's it. You're a witch. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that means you can do energy readings, right? Uh, we are starting to do those, aren't we? What if you do an energy reading of me? Why would I do? I just read about them in last month's Covenpolitan. They said energy readings can help you figure out how you're feeling. Apparently they should be easy enough for a witch. Unless you're really, like, not a witch. Uh... Cracks Knuckles, I'm a witch. I can do energy readings with my eyes closed. Even though I've never done one with my eyes open. What was that? Nothing. Now get into position. I can't move. Right, you should be fine as is. You've watched your grand do hundreds of energy readings, so it can't be that hard. I mean, and we are starting to, I feel like, to pick up on people's energies after we've interacted with them. So we got this. Besides, it's not like Nisha has any experience with energy readings either. She won't be able to tell if you're really seeing something or just making it up. All right, let's see what we've got going on here. I'm seeing colors. Oh. I don't, I can't remember if she had picked up any readings from her before and was seeing some colors from her. Unfocus your eyes. It's all looking a little murky, like it's all blending together. Like the color of the water you clean your paintbrush in. Ew, that's like not good, right? Eh. Let's just move on. What else do you see? Yeah, Moxie, what else do you see? How about the shape? Uh. And your aura, aura radiates. Like a big bright star. Well, that sounds good. It's hard to tell if it's radiating with positive energy or if it's about to explode. That may not be so good. At least it seems like Nisha's buying it, but you're kind of running out of ideas. Let's wrap this up with one more element that you see. It looks like the aura is concentrating around... Not your stomach, your head? Similar to a crown. Could mean a sign of transformation or transcendence. Or if blocked, loss of sense of meaning. That sounds a little intense. So brownish and radiant energy located around my head. Okay, but what do these things combined mean? What is the deal with this stupid room and with me? Well, you see, just as you're about to give your explanation, you realize you do feel a strange energy. Like a simmer on the verge of a boil. And it seems to want Nisha's attention. Could the energy be coming from the room, or maybe from something else? It's probably best you just focus on the aura reading. It's what Nisha asked for anyway. The murky brownish color indicates a blockage of sorts. Meanwhile, the energy's radiant shape says to keep trying to persevere. However, the energy around your head means big new ideas are coming. But you need to seek them out. Wow, you sounded like a legit witch there. There's that weird noise again. There's something in here. What? No. It's just a loose shelf. It is not. Jonas should come over and fix it. No, I can feel it. Nisha, maybe that's the energy you're... No. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the spell and the reading. Look, I can move my feet again. Better get back to work, don't you think? Now, if you could go so I can paint, that'd also be great. Nisha starts pushing you out the door. Wait, Nisha. Let's figure this out together. Sorry, really, it's nothing to worry about. Why? We keep picking the flirty option with everybody. <laughs> I mean, hello, you gotta. Nisha slams the door behind you. Why does it feel like everyone in this village asks for my help and then kicks me out? Because they do. Uh, let's check in on Devin. You walk up to the music studio. You oddly don't hear any sound coming from inside. Devin, are you in there? The door creaks open. Someone peeks out. Moxie, is that you? Yeah? And only you? 
as far as I can tell. We need to be quick. Devin opens the door and pulls you inside. Devin, what's going on? All right, we're good. You look down and notice Devin is grasping your arm. You put your hand on theirs. Devin lessens the hold on your arm. You want to talk about it? You're going to laugh at me. I'd never laugh at you. After what I did at that party, people keep coming to see me. So every time someone knocks on the door, I put on a fake voice and tell them I'm not here. But I don't think it's very convincing because they keep coming. And now everyone just thinks I'm weird. That means the spell worked. They're not supposed to think I'm weird. Not that. The fact that people are coming to see you, I guess. But I think I've caught a slight cold from that lake swim. I've been drowsy and unable to focus all day. I see. Uh, sometimes sacrifices must be made. I only have so much control. Extreme actions mean extreme results. Let's go with sacrifices. I don't know. And sometimes that sacrifices work. And who needs work? Oh, that's not the right answer. Moxie, don't discourage Devin from what they're they're trying to accomplish. Honestly, I'm jealous of people like Nisha and Jonas. People with big personalities can walk into a room full of confidence and people notice them. But for me, I feel like such a background person. You and me both, Devin. But I'm okay with that. And then when I get my time in the spotlight, I just get overwhelmed. Yeah. I feel like I should be more like them than I would have a role in social situations. A role? Like a job? I guess. I mean, like, what do I bring to the table? I'm just the dull, quiet person who stands in the corner. People only come to see me now because they think I'm something else. Hmm. But don't you want to be someone else? Wasn't it New Summer, New Me or something? I was wrong. I want to be the quiet person who stands in the corner, but that doesn't feel interesting enough. Sorry, I'm being such a downer right now. But I don't know what to do. Hmm. I, I, I guess we'll go with the flirty, but I would love to stay to say I'll stand in the corner with you, but we'll take their hand. I'm sorry you're feeling this way. I know I'm also not the most socially experienced person, but I don't think you're dull at all. I appreciate your more quiet nature. A lot of social stuff is overwhelming for me, too. So you can count on me to stand in that corner with you. Nice. Thanks, Moxie. That means a lot to me. I don't know about you, but I feel like there's this pressure, like I need to be socializing all the time. And if I don't make the most of it, I somehow failed. Is that, is that what I'm supposed to be feeling too? No, 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 I've spread my anxiety again. This is, this is pretty hard. Well, I'm glad I'm not the only new person here at least. Yep, feel free to vent to me about the awkwardness of it all. And you can vent to me too. And we can help each other summon the courage to keep marching forward. We shall rule over the quiet back corner of every party. I am also that person that will find a nice quiet corner <laughs> at a party. And it's just the best place to be, though, because you can watch and see everything going on. And you'll find people kind of come and go and hang out and chat and take a little break from all the loud social stuff, decompress. It's nice. Yes, it shall be open to everyone who wishes they weren't at the party. There's usually quite a few people who feel that way. I'm really glad you stopped by. I'm feeling much better now. I'm glad. I should get going, though, and let you rest. Thanks. Also, if you see anyone looking for me on your way out, tell them you aren't here. Got it. Thanks, Moxie. Bye. Bye. I almost want to change our little outfit. Oh, yeah, we're seeing burgundy. Burgundy is a color used for manifesting. I could help Devin summon up the energy to make things happen. Let me write this down in my grimoire. All right, let's uh, deliver to Jonas. You arrive at the town square and look around for Jonas, but you can't seem to find him. Jonas, where are you? Just over here. You see a hand wave at you from behind one of the booths. You walk over and look behind it to find Jonas curled up in a ball and hiding his face. Can I can I get that spell I requested? Um, yeah. Uh, 
uh, safety oil. Is there a reason you're hiding over here? Jonas lifts his head as he takes the safety oil from you. Jonas, what happened to your face? Oh, he's all bandaged. Does it really look that bad? Let me see. Take a closer look, flirty. You lean in close to Jonas. He looks pretty banged up. What are you doing? Uh, sorry. Just wanted to make sure none of your injuries look too serious. Oh, um, thanks, I guess. We're both blushing. So what exactly happened? My face. Well, that's from a metal bar swinging into my eye. Then you can't see them, but all my fingers are bruised from missing nails with my hammer. I thought you were supposed to be good at this building stuff. Usually I am. I pride myself on workplace safety, but something feels off. I see. Um, yeah, his boss did break his leg, but let's just go with like what? Maybe it's this whole being a boss thing. People ask so many questions, and every time they do, it's when I'm in the middle of something. And then, wha-bam, there goes another finger. Okay, so you're not the best at multitasking is what I'm learning. Nope. So, why are you hiding? Because I have to demonstrate the new saw to the crew in a few minutes. And you're afraid that I'm going to saw my arm off. I see. Um... You've got your safety spell. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're talking about an arm or no arm here. Do you doubt my spell work? Uh, no, it's just... Can you say a few, like, magic words or something? Magic words? Isn't that a thing witches do? Isn't that a thing witches do? Sure, maybe in children's books. I love that we have our little inter in in inter in internal dialogue that we get to read as well. Uh, yes, of course. How does this sound to you? Uh, moon crystal power makeup, a la peanut butter sandwich, Arusner Guintana. We'll go with that one. Whoa, you can speak ancient witch? Wait, why are you laughing? You're pulling my leg, aren't you? Jonas, Jonas, where are you? Crap, it's almost time. I'm going to die. You gotta help me. Did you apply the safety oil yet? Oh, right. Jonas smears the oil all over himself. Okay, okay. Now what? Go to your meeting? But the magic words. Jonas really does doubt the potency of your magic. You should show him how it's done. Or is it even worth the effort? How about making him pay? Okay, here's some magic words. Slow and steady, watch your back. Planks of wood, bars of steel. Safe inside is the place to be. Oh gosh, safe inside is the place to be for outside there are allergy. <laughs> Moxie, sniffles, allergies. That I wish I'd picked a different answer now. There he is. Come on, Jonas. Ah, coming. You and Jonas walk over toward his crew. Time to watch the magic happen. Jonas takes his place by a massive saw. Hello, crew. Today I'm here to give you a demonstration of this new piece of equipment you see right here. It's a giant saw. And I don't think I need to say this, but I'll say it anyway. A giant saw is not a toy. So, um, first you press this button here. Achoo! I'm so worried. Jonas pauses and looks around. Anyway, just press this button and... Achoo! Jonas pauses and looks around again. Just press this button and... Achoo! Okay, er, sorry, something is just really... A boss? Oh no, Jonas starts to look a little faint. Should I grab him? Grab me? Why would you need to do that? The whole crew descends upon Jonas. What the? Does he have a fever? No. Must be allergies. I don't have... Well, that's a relief, but did, jo did Jonas have allergies? I said I don't have... Crew, sometimes you can develop allergies later in life. Yeah, don't I know it. Oh, best to get him home, yeah? If he's looking this bad, yeah. Come on, boss. Let's get you home. One of the crew members reaches out to Jonas. I said I don't have allergies. Jonas shoves his way out of the crowd and takes off running. His crew stands around dumbfounded. Maybe it wasn't allergies after all. Did we curse him with allergies? He tiptoe away from the festival site. Oh, Moxie. 
The allergy curse was a success. Well, at least he didn't have to demonstrate the saw, right? And Jonas didn't cut off his arm. That's good, right? Yikes. All right, let's check in with Gene, see how he's doing. If he's doing any better with his uh, baking. I should check in on Gene. Maybe he'll have some snacks for me. You walk up and knock on the door. Yes? Is he not going to open the door? You open the door and see Jean surrounded by books. What the heck? Ah, Moxie. Am I interrupting something? Mm, Jean stands up. I can help myself out. No, I should take a break. Jean just stands in silence. Uh, sorry, I was just thinking. Come this way. Jean leads you into the kitchen. Tea? Yes, please. Jean brings two cups of tea to the table. I also have some macaroon, macaron, macaron, macarons. Oh, why can I not word? Would you like? Yes. Jean brings over a plate of macaroons. See, now it's got two O's. Macaroons in a rainbow of colors. You take oh, the pink line, of course. So pretty. That one is raspberry. Ooh, yum. You take a bite. A perfect level of sweet yet tart. Tartness is one of the key attributes of raspberries, yet sometimes it can be too much. You want to use sugar to balance the tartness, but not overwhelm it. What were all those books you were reading? Cookbooks. You still read cookbooks? Of course. But don't you have, like, all your own recipes? Yes, but I study to create them. Also, it's good to learn about the other people's techniques. You never know what will prove helpful. So that means you'll be studying for, like, ever. Do witches not continue to study throughout their lives? Hmm. It sounds structured learning isn't for me. But this isn't structured. More of a process of failures and successes. Do your failures explode? Sometimes they burn. I was like you as a student. Really? I wasn't very good at school. Hang on now. Teachers would get mad at me for reading cookbooks in class. You must have been popular. I wasn't. <laughs> they put me in charge of the school's bake sale one day as a punishment. No one wanted to help me, so I had to do it all myself. I baked all sorts of cookies and cakes. It was a lot of work. A lot of work. I guess I'm here as a punishment, but I'm not putting the festival on by myself. No, the point of the bake sale was to punish me for my love of baking. That's awful. But you still love baking? Even more so. Everything sold out from that bake sale. It was the most successful one ever. Good for you, Jean. One of the people there was a teacher from a culinary school, and they asked me if I'd like to attend their school. I said yes and never looked back. Learning isn't bad, but not everyone learns the same way. Also, some people are just mean. Very true. <laughs> I'm happy you didn't stop baking for one. These mac see, macarons are delicious. Thank you. Jean looks over at his stack of books. Break time's over, isn't it? If you don't mind. Not at all. See you later. Mm-hmm. Looks like Jean's doing a little better. Maybe someday I'll enjoy learning as much as Jean. Maybe. Hmm, yellow? Yellow can be associated with learning, but also joy. Even though he seems to already like learning, I guess Jean is struggling with those Madelines. No, see, oh yeah, he's still struggling with the Madelines. Yeah, I forgot that's different than the ma ma macarons. Why, why? I know what they are, people. I just can't say it. Maybe incorporating something yellow would help remind him to find the joy in learning. Yeah, let's take note of that in my grimoire. All right. We are going to, we're going to save the mare for last. Let's talk to Mel. I need a little sip of my water. Okay. You walk into Mel's office, but Mel is nowhere to be found. Hmm, maybe she isn't here after all. Guess I'll come back. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> you walk over to Mel's desk and look over a massive stack of papers to find her fast asleep. I'll just leave the spell on her desk. When you place the charm on Mel's desk, you knock over her pencil holder. Oh god, the festival's on fire! Ah! 
Oh, <laughs> that festival's not on fire. It's Moxie. Not that you're on fa fire. That's not what I what I uh, meant. Sorry, I'm just so. Zzz. Uh, Mel, don't worry, Mare. The petting zoo is completely sort. Oh, Moxie, it's still you. If you're this tired, why don't you just go home and sleep? No, no time. Must count napkins. Zzz. Here, try holding the charm and see if it helps. You put the energized charm in Mel's hands. Her eyes are somewhat open, but you can tell she's barely hanging in there. An energized charm won't be strong enough to help with this level ex of exhaustion. But you know Mel is beyond stress, so maybe getting work done is what she needs before she can rest. Mel, I'm going to try something a little extra to help you out. Have you ever read about incantations in Covenpolitan? I thought you said no more Covenpolitan. I did, but I want you to try something, okay? You search around Mel's office. Fortunately, her witchcraft hobby means she has some basic spell supplies around. You manage to find a few white candles and some matches. You place them on the desk in front of Mel and light them. Incantations are usually good for summoning up a big dose of energy. But you have a feeling getting Mel to say one in her state will be a little tricky. I've lit some candles and now I'm going to say some words. I need you to repeat what I say with every ounce of energy you have, okay? Yes, Jean, I've got this. I'm not... Oh, what's the point? Maybe an incantation that, that imbues Mel with a strong sense of duty is best. Or maybe just something that will help her trudge through all this stuff. She needs to go home and go to bed is what she needs. Or tough love? Let's try... Let's see, we have, oh sun, please let me rise. I'll complete my task one by one. No rest for this lady until she's 80. Let's go with, oh sun, please let me rise. Give me energy to soar the skies. Sun, nice sun, so warm. Oh, that's gonna make her sleepy. <laughs> no, Mel, repeat the words. What words? Zzz. This is going to be harder than I thought. And yeah, I'm reading out the Z's. I'm not going to actually make a snoring sound for you all because I don't need you all knowing what I sound like when I snore. <laughs> Time to be dramatic. Fire. Quick, get the hose. Oh, I was dreaming again. Did the incantation work? No, because I need you to say the incantation with me. Please try again. Don't, don't give up on me. All right, now that you might have Mel's attention, let's give this another go. Okay, now focus on what I say. I'll complete my task one by one, even if they're no fun. I'll complete my tasks. And she's out. <laughs> Mel, you're so close. Come on, you can do it. They're no fun. Mel squeezes the energized charm and lifts her head a little higher. I think I can feel its energy starting to work. Fantastic. If you say it one more time, you'll be back up on your feet. And I'll get all my work done? Of course. Behold the power of magic, right? Yes, magic. Say the incantation one more time. Here we go. I'll complete my tasks one by one, even if they're no fun. Mel sits straight in her chair, grasping the energized charm. She takes a deep breath. I'll complete my tasks one by one, even if they're no fun. I feel it. I feel amazing. Incantations are amazing. Witches are amazing. It's up to me to make up for the fact that we're understaffed and over budget. Pulling all those old nighters has started getting a little rough, but it is what it is. Is there no one else who can help? I mean, yes, but people also keep asking me for help, and so the cycle continues. But I feel much better now, thanks to you. Now, if you don't mind, I really want to take advantage of this burst of energy, okay? Sure thing, just make sure to get some proper rest. Yes, yes, we'll do, we'll do. Hmm, that wasn't so hard after all. And now Mel will be able to get all her work done and get some proper rest. All right, let's check in with Ruth. Always interesting. I wonder how Ruth's day of relaxation went. That's right, she was all, hey girl, hey, and wanted to go get, her, get a pedicure, right? Or a manicure, one or the other. I'm gonna stop by and check on her. You knock on Ruth's office door. One moment, please. You hear Ruth talking with someone. You can't hear what she's saying, but Ruth sounds agitated. 
The conversation ends. A person you assume is involved with festival preparations leaves. Come in. Oh, Moxie, is there something I can help you with? I was just stopping by to see how the relaxation spell worked. Ah, yes, the spell. I don't know what came over me. I wanted to do all these things I normally wouldn't do. But honestly, it was kind of nice switching things up a bit. And my nails have never looked so nice. Perhaps I don't pamper myself enough. Unfortunately, I think it might have scared Nisha a little. I don't think she was quite prepared to deal with that. So it sounds like it worked then. I think so. I just hope I wasn't too much of a burden on Nisha. I've already asked her to do an art installation for the festival. Asking for more than that would be too much. I might be an old lady, but I can still take care of myself. Besides, we've got you to help keep us all in check, right? Um... <laughs> laugh maniacally? Uh, yeah, totally. We'll go with that. <laughs> I'm only teasing. Well, sort of. No people are worried about me. I can sense it from Mel as well, and maybe just maybe a smidge from you. Yeah. I'll tell you what I tell everyone else. If the festival goes well, everything will fall into place. What's everything? Well, if the festival goes well, there's no more reason to worry. The village will be back on its feet. People will be interested in revisiting flora. Our farms will produce an abundance of produce. Our artisans will draw people from all around. Those are some lofty goals for one festival. I know, but American dream. But what I want the most, truly, more than anything, is for Nisha to feel comfortable leaving here. Huh? I actually do kind of get it. I get it. You want to give Nisha the stability she needs to experiment. That's correct. Nisha had a rough childhood. My daughter, her mother, passed away. Then the bullying in school. I tried to be there for, the best, for her the best I could, but it was hard balancing all of it. The village entered a slump. I worked longer hours, which meant missed art shows. I always tried to make it up to her. I always supported her, but... It's very strange becoming the person who causes worrying rather than being the one who worries. I want Nisha to become the best person she could be. She can't be stuck thinking about an old lady like me. Have you, like, ever told Nisha any of this? No, no, she doesn't need me to dump on her right now emotionally. Not that you need me to do that either. Goodness, my apologies. You only stopped by to ask about the spell. Stop being so emotional, Ruth. You have work to get done. It's all right, really. No, no more of this talk. As Mel would say, we must focus on the task at hand. Though I am glad I got some of that stuff off my chest. Perhaps that relaxation spell still has some lingering effects. Yeah, maybe. Well, I shouldn't keep you any longer. I'm sure you were planning on this being a quick visit. Actually, I wasn't rushed. No worries. Out the door with you. We've all got things to do today, correct? Uh, farewell, Moxie. Ruth pushes you out of her office and closes the door behind you. She is a strange old lady. I can think of... I can kind of see how she and Gran are friends. Seems like she cares a lot about Nisha, but that's also somehow stressful. Black? A color for connection? But like a deep connection, but also boundaries. Interesting. Yeah, maybe Ruth could use something associated with the color black. She cares a lot about everything, but maybe that somehow holds her back. But back from what, I wonder? I'll jot that down in my grimoire. Okay, let's head back home. I do want to look at my grimoire, see the notes we've been jotting down. So yeah, we've been adding the... We haven't... Okay, we've got purple and red for Ruth so far. Maybe next time we'll see black? I don't know. Interesting. I want to just poke through this a little more. We've seen white and black. White and that purpley color, red color. Yeah, here's the recipes we've unlocked. How many more do we have left to unlock? One, two, three, four, five. Have we done incense yet? I think so. 
Six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah, there's some. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have twelve more to learn, and these look like the items you can buy at the store. Interesting. Um, I don't know if we can talk to Ramsey again. You've got something for me today? I want to see it. Yes, I remember our agreement. I don't know if we'll be able to get something else. I think this is just always an option, and sometimes he has something for us. But you can't usually do more than one in a day. Yeah, I already gave you a treat. <laughs> you sneaky bird. You can't fool me. That's cute. Let's ask about... Um, Oh, no, because I just realized I was going to ask him about um, how are we doing on preparations. But that's, we've already done that. That just tells us that we've done all of our chores or whatever for the day. I will not be bribed. <laughs> the thing you have for me is shiny? Well, then maybe I'll think about it, okay? So hopefully on the next episode, we'll get something else from Ramsey. Where are we on our calendar? We're still on our first week. So we're going to go ahead and end this here, and we will play through Friday on the very next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you are enjoying this sweet little series as much as I am. We will see you soon. Take care.